Hola a todos and welcome to Julia Journey, Juggling Jargon Joyfully. This series is aimed towards programmers in other languages that want to learn more about Julia. The focus will be on the differences between Julia and the other programming languages such as Python, MATLAB and C++ and the features of Julia. I will bring short videos starting with this one in which we're going to learn how to install Julia and the editors that support Julia. The next one will be out soon as well with basics and future videos will touch more specific features of Julia. If you want to know about any specific topic, let me know in the comments so that I can prepare sooner for it. Remember to click the bell button below so you can be notified when new videos come up. Installing Julia is quite easy but you do have some options. The most straightforward is by going to the Julia Lang website, julialang.org, clicking download, and then you can select the one that makes sense for your system. Here, just select the latest one, stable release 185, look into Windows, Mac, or Linux, and that's it. If this is steps enough for you and you want to skip ahead, just do it. Otherwise, I'm gonna talk more about other ways of installing Julia, and if you want to maintain more than one Julia versions in your system. If this way of installing Julia did not work for you and want to learn more, leave a comment below so I can look into it. There are usually a few Julia versions to install. You always have a stable release, which in this case is version 185. You normally also have a long-term support. They normally are different. Uh, this long-term support is 167. And you frequently also have the upcoming release, which in this case is version 190RC2. The RC here stands for Release Candidate. Sometimes instead of having a release candidate, you have a beta release and sometimes you have nothing upcoming yet. The second common way of installing Julia is by using your systems package manager. For instance, you can use Chocolately for Windows or Homebrew for Mac, or you can use whatever your Linux distribution has like apt-get or pacman. I am using Arc Linux, so if I go into my terminal and I search for Julia using pacman, I'm going to find here the community Julia version. The normal thing that you're going to find, you're going to find the latest Julia version, in this case, 185. Another option to install Julia is to use a Julia version manager. So I created Jill, which is a Julia installer for Linux, Lite, J-I-L-L, -L, in 2017, and I've been maintaining it since. I use it to keep of different versions of Julia in my computer, but also to just download the latest version quite easily. If you want to use Jill, you can just go to github.com slash abel siqueira slash Jill, J-I-L-L, and you can run this command here. Jill will work on Linux and Mac. And if you do use Jill, I would ask you to please leave a star so I know that people are using it. Thanks. The Julia maintainers are also maintaining Julia Up, which is a Julia version manager that supports Windows. Now that we have Julia installed, you need to install an editor or IDE. The most common IDE for Julia is VS Code, it has many nice features. The common alternatives are Vim and Emacs by people that usually already use Vim or Emacs. If you don't have any preference and you are not using any of these editors, I would recommend you to use VS Code for your package development or script development. To make VS Code work with Julia, you want to install an extension, so click here on extension and search for Julia. The main thing that you need is Julia language support. It's an official extension. This is the only extension that you actually need. If you want, you can install the color themes and a formatter, but these things are not necessary for your usual development. To test that Julia is working in your VS Code, you can just write something that Julia will interpret, one plus two, and then you can out enter. The Julia language servers should start and then a terminal will open. The first time that you run this, it's going to pre-compile the VS Code server, so it takes a little longer. Uh, also, if you have things like the environment for Python, these, there is some kind of mix, but uh, unfortunately, I don't know how to fix this and it doesn't bother me so much. The second time that you press out enter, it just works normally. You can see here the tree, you can see here the tree, it's working. If it doesn't work, one of the common issues is the path for Julia. So open the settings, you can just press Ctrl, comma, then you can search for Julia path. And here in the executable path, you might have to fix or update something according to the path in your system. Many people also use notebooks when developing for Julia. The Jupyter notebook will work with Julia. You just have to install the iJulia kernel. 
We're not going to be using Jupiter too much, but just so you know, the Ju in Jupiter it stands for Julia. So this was already planned for a long time that Jupiter would work for Julia. The notebook that we're going to be using mainly is Pluto, and Pluto is a dedicated notebook for Julia. So let's install Pluto first. So to install Pluto first, you have to open the Julia terminal. In my case, I can just type Julia in my terminal. And then you're going to press the close brackets key. So I'm looking for this key here, the close brackets. When I press the close brackets, the Julia prompt, which is this thing here, is going to change to say package. We're going to talk much more about package in the future, but for now, we just want to write down add Pluto. The P is uppercase, the rest is not. Enter and it's going to install Pluto. I have Pluto installed already, so it doesn't do anything except check that Pluto is not in need of an update. After Pluto is installed, we can just backspace and go back to the Julia terminal. And now whenever you need to run Pluto, you open the Julia terminal and you write using Pluto. The first time it's going to precompile Pluto as well. And then you just run Pluto.run. That's it. Your browser should automatically open this Pluto page after you run Pluto.run. Here you're going to see all the notebooks that you already have. In my case, a lot. In your case, maybe none. And then you're going to create a new notebook. So the main difference of Pluto and Jupyter is that Pluto is reactive. That means that when you write something like x equals 1 and use that x somewhere else, the value of x is updated throughout the notebook whenever you change it. So here I'm changing x to 3. I can press play to run this and then x plus 2 becomes 5. I could change this to minus 1. I can press ctrl enter to run this and it gets updated here. If I change to 0, I press shift enter. It runs in place and this gets updated. Uh, by the way, I can also just save the notebook and the whole notebook is saved. So if I say x equals 100, control S for saving, and this becomes x plus 2 equals 102. The order in which these things are defined does not matter, so I can move the cell to a position below. I could move all of my hard cells to a hidden place in the bottom and leave the cells up here. I can also hide the actual code using this uh, I. I can show or not the code, and I can also write markdown code. Actually, to write markdown code, you can start writing whatever you want, this title, and you can press Ctrl M, and this becomes a markdown uh, variable. So, MD, triple quotes, and then end with a triple quote is a Julia thing to convert this code to a markdown value. Pluto has a constraint, it doesn't let you write more than one command in a cell. So if I want to say z equals 1, z plus 1, and I press Ctrl Enter, it will give me an error, it will say multiple expressions in one cell, this is the error. So I can fix it in two ways, and it's telling me how to fix it. I could split this cell into two cells, like this, right, x equals 1, z plus 1. Or I can also just do a begin end. Begin end is actually one command. It creates a, a scope. And here I can say w equals 5, w plus 5. There is also let end. Instead of writing begin end, there is also let end. Let end works the same way, except that let hides the content. So here I define w, I define z here in the global, I guess, workspace. So if I try to do z times w, this works. But if I try to use v, it does not, because v is not defined. So if you want to write something that you're, you're not going to need anywhere else, use let, so you don't pollute your workspace. Pluto also installs things for you automatically. So if you go here, I normally put all of my using on the top, and it's a using plots. And if you run or save this, it's going to start to download the plots package. Automatically installs plots for you in a separate environment, so it doesn't pollute your main environment either. By the way, we're going to talk about environments in a future video. That's it for now. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to support the channel, and I'll see you next time. Ciao!